Hey, welcome back to the channel. So on my other channel, I recently did a video about using Linux on older Macs. I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna check that out. But in that video, I promised some tutorials about uh, installing different distributions on some older Mac computers. And that is the first of those videos today. Today, we're gonna to be installing Endeavor OS on a 2012 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of these videos. So if you like this kind of thing, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I put a new one up and with that out of the way let's jump right onto the computer and go through the installation. All right so here we are on the desktop and since we're doing a Linux install on a Mac I'm going to assume you're using Mac OS so that's why I'm doing it for Mac OS here. These steps are exactly the same whether you're starting in Mac OS, Linux or Windows whatever you have installed on your MacBook Pro. Um, the same software is going to apply. The steps will be the same. So first thing we're going to do is open a browser and go to EndeavorOS.com. And then we just want to go and download the latest ISO. So we're going to click here and go to latest releases. You can also get there just by doing the drop down, latest releases and download. And then we're going to scroll to the bottom here and find uh, whatever is closest to you. I'm going to go ahead and just get it from GitHub here and we'll download that and just uh, wait till that finishes. All right, so now we have the ISO and we need some way to burn that onto our thumb drive. So make sure you have at least an eight gig thumb drive. And we are gonna get the software called Etcher. Now again, this is available in Mac OS, Windows and Linux. So just open up your browser of choice, go to search for Etcher and we're gonna go to this Blaina Etcher. Uh, it's www.blaina.io. So we're gonna go there. And this download area detects what operating system you're using. You can also click uh, the down arrow and get it for any other operating system. But since we're on Mac OS, we're just gonna click the Mac OS download. That just takes a few seconds to download. Once it does, we're gonna go ahead and install it, which on the Mac is just dragging into the applications folder. Obviously that's going to be different on Windows and Linux, but however you do it on your operating system, just install it uh, for both Windows and Linux. It comes with an installer on Linux. You can also get, uh, I think they have it as a flat pack and a snap as well, if you want to use those. Okay, once that's uh, downloaded, all we want to do is take our thumb drive. We're going to stick it into our computer doesn't have to be formatted or anything. Etcher will take care of all that for you. Um, it doesn't recognize the, the formatting that's on my thumb drive. So I'm just gonna hit ignore here and then launch Etcher. All right, so once Etcher is loaded, we just want to click flash from file and go and download or select the Endeavor OS download that we uh, just got. So we're gonna select the ISO and then we're going to select where we want to burn that to. So we're going to make sure we select our uh, thumb drive, which in my case is this cruiser glide here. So I'm going to select that and then just hit flash. And now we're just going to let that run and uh, finish the install. And then I'll come back when that's done. All right, so Etcher's all done. We can eject the newly made thumb drive and pull it out of the computer. Now we're gonna take this and put it in the MacBook Pro and then boot it up holding down the option key. Now, when we do that, we're gonna be presented with uh, a couple of options. We want to choose the, uh, the EFI booter and boot off the thumb drive. It's gonna be pretty obvious which one to choose. And once that boots up, it should boot into the installation and uh, we'll pick it up from there. All right, so here we are on the desktop for Endeavor OS. And one good thing about this distribution is it recognizes all of the hardware, including the Wi-Fi card. So we're gonna go ahead and just connect to our Wi-Fi network here. So we'll just give that a few seconds to connect. All right, so now the Wi-Fi is connected and we're ready to start the install. All we need to do is just click start the installer. This is gonna ask you if you wanna do it in online or offline mode. Now offline mode will just install the version of the distro that's on the thumb drive and it'll just give you this default XFCE desktop. Uh, if we do the online mode, it'll let, let us choose the desktop and um, additional software that we wanna install. It'll get latest patches and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that since I'm connected to Wi-Fi, we'll click online. And we'll just hit next. It's gonna detect where we are. So you just wanna tell it where you are. And your default keyboard, just leave all the defaults. 
This screen lets you choose how and where you want to install this. So if you only have one drive in your MacBook, there's only going to be one drive up here, which is what I have. I just have this 500 gig drive or 480 gig drive in my uh, MacBook Pro. But if you have two drives, like if you swapped out your CD drive and you have two drives in there, then, um, you know, you'll just choose which one you want to install that on. I'm going to come here and erase it. So this is going to completely wipe out the disk and uh, reinstall the partitions and then install the operating system on top of that. Uh, this first one tells you what you currently had installed on there. So I had Endeavor OS because I've done some testing on this already. And then the, down below it, it's going to tell you what the new partition scheme is going to be. So just hit next here. Now, uh, Endeavor OS is a little bit different than a lot of other distributions because a lot of other distributions, when you install it, it has a uh, built-in desktop in that installer. And you can usually download different versions, like different ISOs for different desktop environments. But one thing that's really cool about Endeavor OS is it lets you choose the desktop environment that you want to use when you're installing it. If you're just coming for Mac and you're just starting with Linux, I would say go with uh, GNOME or GNOME, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's just a very, very user friendly uh, desktop environment. And honestly, in my opinion, if somebody's coming from a Mac, it's uh, probably the easiest to get used to because now a lot of the trackpad gestures work on the MacBook Pro, um, you know, that you're used to in Mac OS. And um, it's just a very intuitive user interface. So. Choose whatever desktop you want. I recommend if you're just starting out, go with GNOME. Then just hit next and you can choose some additional software. Like if you have, uh, if you wanna be able to print, you can select printing support. If you have HP printers, which I do, you can select that one and you know, and it'll install the drivers for that. So then you just hit next and pick a username and you can name your computer and then just a password. And then uh, once you have all that filled in, hit next. This gives you a snapshot of everything it's gonna do. If everything looks good, hit the install and then install now. This is gonna take a while. It's gonna go through this installation. It's uh, partitioning your drive. It's installing all the software. It's downloading updates, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm gonna let this run and when it's all complete, uh, I'll come back and finish this video. If you're doing it, especially depending on your network connection, if it takes a while, don't worry, uh, it's still going. I mean, if it takes all night, there's probably something wrong. But you know, if it, if, uh, it takes a little while, just be patient and uh, it'll finish eventually. All right, so our installation is all done and now we just hit the restart now, hit done and the MacBook Pro is gonna restart. Once it restarts, you can pull out that thumb drive and then uh, when it boots up, we'll be at the login screen for Endeavor OS. So let's give it a second and uh, see what happens. All right, I had trouble capturing the login screen from my screen capture, so I had to do it from the camera. But all we're gonna do is click on our login name, put in the password, and it's gonna launch right to the desktop. And there we are at the desktop. Now, when you first launch, uh, Endeavor OS launches this welcome uh, application. There's different tabs. You can get through the general info after install, assistant, blah, blah, blah. Um, I would recommend that you do some of the stuff in the after install. So update mirrors. What that's going to do is that's going to look for the local mirrors for the repositories, the application repositories. It's going to do some testing and uh, it's going to rate, rate them from slowest to fastest and then let you update your repository file so that when you're getting your applications, you're getting it from the fastest source based on your location. So just let that run for a few seconds here. Once that finishes running, it's going to give you a little uh, list of the, you know, what servers it tried and stuff. Just go ahead and save this to the default mirror list. You're going to have to put in your password again. And then you're good to go. Next thing is you want to do the update system. So it should have looked for updates during the installation, but just in case hit the update system just to make sure there's nothing critical out there. Uh, sometimes it will get a new kernel. Um, in this case, it's found a few uh, packages that it needs to install. So we're going to go ahead and install those. So that's all installed. We can go ahead and hit, hit enter to close it. And because of the nature of the updates that were installed, it's recommending re restart. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just go over to the menu on the right, hit power log out and restart. And then I'll come back when the computer's rebooted. And here we are, we're back up. You can see that welcome screen just popped up again. 
that's all the um, items that I'm going to do. You can go through these after install uh, options and set them all up, but that's enough for right now. Um, we can go ahead and close this. The one thing I want to do is install a graphical package manager. So what that means is kind of like an app store in Mac OS, a place that you can go to download software. Now, the way it is, you can download software through the command line, but um, it's a lot more convenient to have the graphical interface. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the command key, type in terminal, and then I'm going to type in Y-A-Y dash S P A M A C dash A U R. So what this is doing is it's using the uh, yeah um, installer and it's installing the application PAMAC, which is the graphical uh, user interface for the package installer. And it's getting it from the AUR. The AUR is the application user repository. So it's basically a repository of applications that's uploaded by users. So if the uh, software developer doesn't make their own package, then this is an opportunity for one of the people in the Arch Linux community to uh, make the software available for download. So it's super easy to download and install. So we're just going to hit enter on that. And then we're going to hit uh, pick which option we want. We want the one from the AUR. So we're going to pick one. And um, this is just an option asking you if you want to remove the dependencies after install. Um, I usually just leave them on there because sometimes these dependencies are used by other packages and that saves you from having to download it again. If you're concerned about space, you can hit yes and have those removed. So I'm just going to choose the default and say to leave them. So this is basically just asking you if you want to see some of the build uh, files and I'm just going to hit no and just let it install and then enter your password. Hit yes, this is just a list of everything that's going to be installed as part of this package. So we'll hit yes. So now it's downloading all the dependencies for the package and the package itself and installing. Um, it goes pretty quick for this package. So let's just give it a few seconds here. All right, so we're all installed. So we can exit out of here. And now if we want to install software, we can just go to software, add remove software here. And then what we want to do is we want to turn on that AUR that I mentioned earlier, that application user repository. So we're going to go into the menu, go to preferences, put in your password, go to third party, and then just click this enable AUR. So now if we want to search for software, we can just hit here and say we want to install GIMP, which is a image editor. We can just type in GIMP. It'll show all the different versions of GIMP that are available. So we can just select this first one. So this shows all the different versions of GIMP that are available. This is the installed version. This is an app image and an app image is basically just a wrapper for the application. So you don't actually have to install it. You just run it from this app image, makes it very portable. But we're going to go ahead and just select the regular installed version. Um, it tells you where it's coming from. So this one is coming from the official repositor uh, repositories in the extra area. If we install this one, this one would be coming from that AUR that we just turned on. So we're just going to hit that, hit install. And I'm not saying you have to install GIMP. I'm just doing this as an example of installing an application. Uh, this is going to show you uh, all the dependencies that are needed for uh, GIMP and what's going to be installed with it and the total size. So we're going to hit apply and you can get a status down here. And there we go. It is all installed. So we can close this now. And then if we hit the command key again and type in GIMP, we now have GIMP installed. If you want to see any of your applications that are installed, you can hit the command key twice and um, that just gives you a list. This is almost like a Android or iOS interface. You can drag these around. You can create folders just like you would on, on your smartphone. That's why this desktop environment works really, really well on tablets as well. So just some shortcuts, just a, a single tap of the command key will bring you up to your virtual desktops. You can switch between them and you can just type, uh, start typing. So just hit that and start typing for, you know, GIMP or whatever software you want to install. Um, that's a single tap of the command key. And again, double tap brings you to your application list. Uh, trackpad gestures on the MacBook Pro, a three finger swipe is going to bring you back and forth between your uh, desktops. If you three finger swipe up, it brings you to that same mode that's the same as the single tapping the 
uh, command key. And um, just to show you this, because almost every video I get somebody saying it's fake. So just to show you that this is installed on a MacBook Pro, we'll go to about and we can see that it is installed on Apple Incorporated MacBook Pro 9,2, 16 gigs of RAM, has the i5-3210 processor with the uh, Intel 4000 graphics, and then this is that 480 gig drive I put in. Uh, it also tells you information about your operating system. So GNOME is a fantastic uh, desktop environment. It's very clean, it's very uh, user-friendly, but if you wanna try any of the other ones, the next most popular one is probably KDE. You can have more min minimalistic ones like uh, XFCE if you wanna try that out. And when you're installing it, you just choose it from that desktop environment installer for Endeavor OS. It makes it super, super easy to try out those different desktop environments. So that's all there is to the installation. It's relatively easy. It recognizes all the hardware out of the box and it runs super, super well on this 2012 MacBook Pro. Um, I'm gonna be installing Endeavor OS on a 2014 Mac Mini next. So if you wanna see that video or similar installation videos, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If there's any distributions that you want me to specifically install on either a 2012 MacBook Pro, 2011 MacBook Pro, 2014 Mac Mini, or 2018 Mac Mini, uh, let me know down in the comment section below what you wanna see, and I'm happy to do an install tutorial for any of those. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and I will see you in the next video.